Hey, this is Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 45. On Now You Know. All right, so we got this cool little uh, notification on our app this yeah, week. Yeah, it was like 11 o'clock at night. We had just been talking about uh, you know, the news and stuff like that, and I got this notification on my phone, and you did too, and it said that we had unlocked a secret level yeah. on the Tesla app. Yeah, so we had gotten five referrals, and this said that now we were able to do what? So now we can offer more referrals to our friends, which is great. Yay. So Become our friends. Become our friends if you uh, are looking for... Message us on Facebook and... Tell us a little bit about ourselves. So if you're looking for uh, a new Model S or Model X, we could save you a $1,000. And, and for the you... rest of the year, we can get you unlimited supercharging. That's right. So for life. Also, we um, are unlocking a Something. Tesla Roadster. A next generation a next Roadster. next generation Roadster, which um, is exciting. That's really exciting. So we would, at the next five referrals we get would get us 10% off. And then every referral after that, would get us 2% off. So basically, if you do the math, that's 50 referrals would get a free car. There's gonna be these other secret levels that are unlocked that yes. said with other cool adventures. So we're thinking there's probably things in there that we're gonna to wanna to give away. Like we've given away so far a whole bunch of other things, like a bunch of uh, Model S for kids mm -hmm. and all sorts of, uh, we're giving away the arachnid wheels. Yep. So we, we wanna give stuff away to you guys. So if you use our referral code, we're gonna be putting you in the, the list of people who are gonna be eligible for the giveaway mm -hmm. for a lot of the cool stuff coming up, which we don't even know what some of this is right now if we win the roadster yes we'll just tour with it i think yeah i think we're going to get be going to rides. all sorts of places we, i mean i think it's really important to get spread the word of tesla yes and uh driving around in a sports car is going to definitely is that fun yeah i think that's going to uh definitely spread the word it's going so to get, catch people's attention i think we should let brent and bobby drive it a lot too <laughs> what i maybe We'll let it drive them. Oh, oh that's How true. About I that? forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can just send it out yeah. to the car shows. So um, if you were thinking about it, um, you can message us on Facebook and use our referral code. Yeah. So the Model 3 has been spotted with a new color. Yes, this is the Midnight Silver, which is a very familiar color. Why I, is it so familiar? I know, it's seen um, it before somewhere. I think it's, it's on one of the cars that we have. It's not my car. Oh. Huh. Oh, it's Sparky. Oh, yeah. So um, I like it. I was wondering why I liked it so yes, much. So that's, I guess that's going to you be your color, Model 3, huh? Well, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I like the fancy red, the founder's red. That's true. Um, I don't, is, do you think this is going to be one of the colors they offer? I certainly hope so. It, it definitely, I think a lot of people like the Midnight Silver. So let us know down in the comments whether you think Midnight Silver would be an option that you would like. All right. So school buses are not usually a sexy story. No, but school buses are dirty. Well, that might be changing. So Bluebird, which is a major manufacturer in the U.S. and Canada mm -hmm. of of, um, of school buses, has just announced that they're going to be coming out with two models that are going to be completely electric, battery powered models. Um, one of them will have a range of a hundred miles, which wow. is plenty for most school districts. Yeah, um, and these will be coming out next year. Um, there's two different kinds. One is that micro bus, the Type A, and the other is the Type uh, Type D. Type D. Now, the Type D is the one with the flat front. Kind of the common. You see a lot of these around. Yes. Um, so, I wanted to do a little research into school buses um, to figure out, is this a big deal or not? So, first right. thing I found out is there's 480,000 school buses in the U.S. It's almost as many reservations for the Model 3. <laughs> that's true. So, I mean, that's a pretty big market. So, Phil Horlock is the president and CEO of Bluebird Corporation, and he said, The addition of electric-powered school buses to our fleet is a further illustration of our commitment to provide the broadest array of school bus products that our customers want and value with zero emissions, low operating costs, and terrific electric engine development. Um, and so, I mean, I think this is really interesting. Uh, we did some research um, in... Each school day in 2015, so this is just a couple of years ago, um, there were, again, 484,000 school buses, mm -hmm. um, and they transported 26.9 million children to and from school. Every day? Every day. Wow. That's over half of the United States um, K-12 through student population is transported by bus. Wow. Yeah. So each bus travels an average of 12,000 miles per year, okay. which is not terribly far. No. And the average school bus uses 1,714 gallons of diesel fuel each year, which costs approximately $6,634. Wow. 
So annually, what is that per student? Yeah, so annually, school districts spend an average of $122 per year for every student who rides the bus, and that's just for the diesel. Oh my gosh, so we're looking at a huge cost savings, Not, I and mean, we haven't even talked about the maintenance of these vehicles and stuff like that, right. but I mean, so most of these buses can do their whole route, then they can plug back in and charge for a few hours until right. the end of the day, right. do their route again, then charge, like it's a perfect use of an electric vehicle. Absolutely. Not to mention, we're not even talking about the pollution here. I mean, if you get behind a school bus, you're, it's gross. It's totally gross. The, it's diesel. You're getting sulfur emissions, you're getting carbon dioxide emissions, you're getting particle emissions. I mean, it's horrible for children and, and people. Right. So this makes a whole lot of sense. It'll be quieter too. I mean, you know how loud school buses are when you're on the bus and when you're off the bus. It's a loud thing. Um, and just, you know, acceleration and everything else that comes along with an electric drive car. It's just fantastic. I was surprised to see that in 1915, over 100 years ago, mm -hmm. Edison invented an electric bus. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, there, this out. we had electric buses. Yeah. And then they disappeared. Right. And now they're back again. Wow. Of course they did. Of course who did? Of course they did. Of course, who did what? Well, okay. So, you, you know, American auto manufacturers and German auto manufacturers and, and Japanese auto manufacturers and Korean auto manufacturers. What do they all do? Well, they don't like making electric cars. Yeah, they really seem to be against it. So, they just wrote a letter to China and they basically said, hey, China, slow down there on your new electric vehicle policy. We can't possibly make that many electric cars. So, can you just change your policy? Right. This Guess is... who didn't sign the letter? Tesla. Oh. Only car manufacturer who didn't sign it. So this is the American Automotive Policy Council, the AAPC, which represents Chrysler, Fiat, Ford, GM. Uh, then there's the European Automobile Manufacturers Association, which represents all the major European manufacturers like uh, BMW and so forth. And then the Japanese Auto Manufacturers uh, Association and the Korean Auto Manufacturers Association. They all signed this letter and they all sent it to China and they all said, please slow down what you're doing. This is just like what happened in the U.S. with the cafe standards. Wow, this is really scummy. Yeah. Especially when a lot of these car manufacturers are claiming that they're going to be having all these great electric cars. Right. It just puts a really bad taste in my mouth. They're not embracing it. They, no. they are totally fighting it tooth and nail. They're the right. screaming child in the supermarket mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. It's awful. Yep. Here's what they said. Because we have common concerns with the proposed NEV rules, we have joined together to offer with utmost respect six recommended modifications that address those concerns while still meeting the goals of those rules and other related policies. I, I don't know. To me, like, this is just, it just shows them for who they are. Ugh. China, don't listen to them. Yeah, I mean, so some of these recommendations include uh, slowing down the rollout of the mandate by one to three years, uh, reconsidering the penalty system if they don't meet the quota, mm -hmm. having credits not only for all electric cars, but also plug-in hybrids, and basically just making the whole mandate weaker so that they don't have to produce as many electric cars. I mean, yeah. it's just weak sauce, man. Like, And I want to point out, there's over 4,000 deaths per day in China. Like due car accidents? No, no, no. Due to air pollution. Ooh. Yeah. So when you say delay it, you're basically saying, please let more and more people die and don't try and do anything about it. Wow. Yeah. All right, so I know you drive a Nissan Leaf. I drive a Nissan Leaf. And uh, are you excited at all about the new 2018 Nissan Leaf? It's supposed to have a bigger range? I am excited for all new electric cars. Um, I'm excited for cars that have bigger ranges. I think that that's something it's just so much easier to live with. And so we've well, so, seen some, yeah, so some images here. Yeah, check um, this out. So it's hard to see what we're seeing, but you're good at this because you really know your leaf well. What, does this look any different? So I think a couple things, the, the most important things to me would be that they put the lights back inside of the car. Oh, the headlights? Yeah, so the, yeah, the headlights are no, no longer sticking out of the car like bug eyes. Okay. Um, they're, they're back inside of the, the car. The front end looks really cool now. Right. Uh, there is a disadvantage with this in that the uh, now you can't tell if your headlights are on just by looking at them out of your front uh, drive window, that's a disadvantage. But other really? than that, you've I think to, you've learned to like that. I think a lot of people are going to uh, like the look of this car a lot more than they have before um, mm. with the bug eyes and and so they've also changed the back a little bit. Um, the roof still has sort of that flat top that goes into a sort of a swoop in the back, um, but there's no longer those two really tall, long, weird-looking um, brake lights. And it doesn't look like they changed the interior much either. 
Nope. Uh, the the interior looks a, a little bit fancier, um, and there's sort of a one tier dashboard as opposed to multi tier. Seems like if you just change the lights and get a longer range, you're doing fine. That's basically all anyone would want with a right. Leaf. So I think they did a really good job there. They didn't. Doesn't seem like there's anything too crazy on there. Right. Elon just tweeted out this really cool chart here, which uh, kind of caught me unaware. This is a chart of the awarded global commercial launch market. Basically, what this is is um, the space market and showing who kind of is controlling it from 2010 to 2018. And right, so the different market shares here are really astounding yeah. um, of change. Right. So, so SpaceX sort of starts off, you know, with a little chunk of, of market share, and it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows, and now it's like two-thirds of the of the market. Yeah, and if you look, um, there's the ULA, which is uh, Boeing and uh, Lockheed Martin, mm -hmm. and they disappear from the chart in 2018. Yeah, they aren't launching any more satellites. No, they couldn't compete, I guess. Right. So this shows that uh, SpaceX has 64% of the market share, the world market share, of space launches. Wow. That's pretty cool. Elon tweeted, worth noting that Boeing Lockheed, other, other US. US on the chart, get a billion dollar annual subsidy even if they launch nothing. SpaceX does not. Then... Tori Bruno, who's the president and chief executive of United Launch Alliance, which is the partnership between Boeing and Lockheed Martin, he disagreed. He said, sorry, that is simply not true. There is no billion dollar subsidy. Now, I want to talk about the subsidy that Elon is talking about. It's technically not a subsidy, I guess you could say. It's a contract. In 2016, the U.S. government gave to ULA $860 million to make sure that the Delta and Atlas V rockets were ready to launch at any point if they need to put up a like a military satellite. So Benjamin Hunt tweeted to Elon, he said, ULA is essentially being paid to keep their launch facilities ready to launch on short notice for crucial government payloads. Elon tweeted back, we do that too, but for free. So that's the subsidy that that's, Elon's talking that about. That's what he's talking about. If you are one of those people who doesn't want your government wasting money, here's $860 million that we don't need to spend our money on. A year. A year. Right. That could be going to a lot of other important things. So maybe write your congressperson, call them up on the phone and say, hey, uh, I have a better solution. SpaceX. Hang, and then hang up the phone. Right. Uh, Politely. Maybe... Can you hang up a phone politely? Uh, don't hang up the phone. Just be like, SpaceX, I'm out. I think you're going to have to do a little bit more explaining, but uh, please do. Well, so Tim Hughes, who is the senior VP of SpaceX's Global Business and Government Affairs Department, he testified on July 13th before the U.S. Senate Subcommittee on Space, Science, and Technology, and also the Committee on Commerce, Science, and Technology. And he argued that it would be in the best interests of NASA and the United States to encourage competition for deep space exploration. Now, Hughes told the senators that NASA spent $396 million to SpaceX to develop the commercial orbital transport services, and that a study by NASA found that if NASA had tried to do it themselves and develop it the traditional way through contracts, they would have spent 10 times more, or $4 billion. $4 billion. Wow. So Elon Musk just bought uh, a new website. Oh, yeah? Yes. What's uh, this called? X.com. So this is an old website, actually. Okay. Um, he bought it from PayPal. So basically, when PayPal oh, acquired um, Elon's old, basically, PayPal-like company, oh, X.com, X.com, um, they they took the website. Oh, so what's he doing with it now? So um, now Some you cool can, stuff, yeah, huh? you can go there now. What does um, it do? Like, cool pictures? There's a lot and... of stuff. I don't really want to have to get into all of it. Really? Um, but here, just, well, I'll just really quick bring up the homepage. Okay. Um, so as you can see, uh, that's wait, the homepage. Wait, what? Uh, there's so, nothing there. No, 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 there is. There Where? is. Where? To look up in the top left-hand corner. Oh, it just says X. Yeah. So uh, I think this is just sort of a sentimental thing for Elon Musk. Because, um, I mean, this is one of his first websites, and, and I think that now he has control over it. Now, he says that he has plans for it. Well, let's see. So he tweeted, thanks, PayPal, for allowing me to buy back uh, X.com. No, no plans, plans right now, but it has great sentimental value to me. Um Excited to announce the launch of X.com. It's a little verbose right now, but that will be fixed tomorrow. Now, it still is a little verbose to me. There's uh, still a lot of stuff there. So I, I don't quite know exactly mm -hmm. what this is going to turn into, but I think it's definitely interesting. We should definitely keep our eyes on it. You know, X.com was one of the first world online banks. 
Wow. I mean, this is back in November of 1999. I mean, we forget that Elon is innovative whenever he does practically anything. Wow. All right, so we get some new EV chargers here. Uh, the first is that Porsche is installing the first ultra-fast 350 kilowatt EV charging station. Um, it's going to be at their German new offices in Berlin. Mm -hmm. They decided to deploy it, um, two of them. It's not as sexy as the original pictures said they were going to be, but these are still pretty cool. It's going to pump out a lot of power, 350 kilowatts, 800 yep. volts. Yep. The, the cable is going to be so heavy that it has to come from the top of the unit. It has to because hang down. It has to basically. hang down because it's, it's really, really heavy. So that's interesting. They're also going to have a, another charger in uh, Atlanta. So that'll be, let's see, a whole supercharging network of... Uh, the two, two chargers. Two locations. I don't think you can get to them. You can't you really can't drive. You drive from Berlin to... No, you wouldn't have the range, Atlanta. nor would you have the the vehicle for it. Hmm. So, but anyway. Um, well, kudos to them. Kudos I mean, to them. That's I a lot think of power. as long as they can get some more of those up. I mean, because I want to point out that the existing supercharger network charges at about 135 kilowatts. So this is more than double that speed. So right. uh, almost triple that speed. Yep. As Elon has said, you know, it's easy to make a prototype of something. Within six months, I can right. make a prototype of basically anything. True. I'm sure that they have 350 kilowatt charging stations somewhere at Tesla. Right. I'm sure that they have even more. It's but, probably how he charges his cell phone. Right. But to ramp all of that up into a huge network takes, it's 100 times harder. Right. So, I mean, we'll have to see what... Um, Porsche does with it. Now, you remember the Dieselgate scandal for VW? Yes. They had to pay $2 billion into a fund to start putting uh, electric charging stations throughout the world. Yes. And uh, they're starting to actually unveil those. So VW started the subsidiary called Electrify America. Um, that is their company brand. Mm -hmm. um, and um, in California, they're going to come out with uh, super fast charging. Um, but I guess CARB isn't quite happy with the plans yet or reviewing them so that's not happening quite yet mm -hmm. but what is happening is that there's going to be eight new fast charging stations in Virginia and Maryland okay um, and then the first phase will have 50 new stations that'll be 50 kilowatt dual standard fast charging stations they'll be installed in premier retail properties in 10 major metro markets including yep. Boston Chicago Denver Houston Miami New York Philadelphia Portland and Seattle and Washington, D.C., and that'll happen by September. And the plan is ultimately to have the whole country with a 150-kilowatt uh, fast-charging network. So Sounds familiar. That's pretty cool. Then a 1,000 new EV charging stations will be coming along the German Autobahn by 2020. So Germany has an ambitious goal to have a million EVs on the road by 2020. Right now, they just have 50,000 EVs, so that's quite a goal, but it could happen. And this 1,000 new chargers would increase the number of chargers in Germany by 25%. Wow. Uh, do you know in Germany right now there's a 4,000 euro incentive for electric cars and a 3,000 euro incentive for hybrids? Hyperloop One had a new test. This is pretty exciting. This was so, a secret test back in May. Yes, so they've just sort of released this now. Um, it was a full systems test. I would just say it's a systems test. It's, they didn't have a pod or anything. This is just sort of their their levitation mechanism. Um, they've they ran it at. Um, 70 miles an hour, um, and they were able to achieve levitation. Um, For 5.3 seconds. Yes. So, I mean, this is pretty exciting. Um, it's definitely not, you know, what they are planning to do in the long run, but it is a step in the right direction. Right, because in the long run, they're going to hopefully approach speeds of 700 miles an hour. Uh, the Dev Loop, which is a 500-meter test track in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, is obviously they can't get up to those speeds in it, but right. they are planning to do some pretty cool things. As Shervin Pishvar, the co-founder and executive chairman of Hyperloop One said, Hyperloop One has accomplished what no one has done before by successfully testing the first full-scale Hyperloop system. By achieving full vacuum, we essentially invented our own sky in a tube as if you're flying at 200,000 feet in the air. For the first time in over 100 years, a new mode of transportation has been introduced. Hyperloop is real, and it's here now. So yeah, so the, the unveiled XP1 pod is made of carbon fiber and aluminum, and it's on top of their levitating chassis, and they soon will be testing it at speeds of 250 miles an hour. That's 400 kilometers an hour. Wow. All right, so Southern Company Utility um, has just deployed um, t Tesla Power Packs. That's cool. Yeah. What, now, I've heard about Southern Company. What is it about? The, they're like, they're famous or something. Yes, they have some of the worst polluting uh, power stations in the world. Oh, that's right. That's where I heard about yes. them. They're going to be implementing a 250 kilowatt, one megawatt hour Tesla Power Pack. So that's mm -hmm. kind of small. Um, and that's going to be at their Gulf Powers Douglas McCrary Training and Storm Center in Pensacola, Florida. 
Um, they, yeah, they have the top polluting power plant in the nation. It's the Schurer power plant in Georgia, which emits 21 million metric tons of CO2 per year. Now that's 0.4% of the total US CO2 emissions. That's 0.1% of the global CO2 emissions. Wow, just one and facility. Just one facility. So, I mean, this is actually good news though, folks, because if they're actually looking at Tesla power packs, that means that maybe they wanna get these things offline. Yeah, because it's it's a lot easier to switch to renewables if you have some battery storage. Um, and I think that this is just really cool that you can actually, that people are actually saying, oh, this would work for this application, that it's actually going online. This isn't just vaporware, this isn't just like, you know, one place. It's going online in all sorts of different places in, in Hawaii, in Southern California, and now Pensacola, Florida. in Pensacola, Florida. So it's very cool. So this next story is a Patreon bonus story. So go over to our Patreon. If you become a patron, you can uh, see this bonus story and yep. support us at the same time. Yep. It can be for as little as $1 a month. Oh, and you know what, Jesse? If people go over to our Patreon right now, we're giving away a Model S for kids to one of our lucky Patreons. Ooh. Yeah. So sign up there. You can be a uh, a very good chance of winning. This is the smallest Tesla you can buy. That's true. Just slightly. The Roadster is a little also bit bigger. Also the slowest one you can buy. True. <laughs> Poor acceleration. But, you know, it's it's free, so right. you, you may as well snap the next on kids. You know what I mean? All right, so I just want to give a special shout out to some of our wonderful Patreon supporters who have access to the, uh, the story that's coming out this week. Special shout out to Jenny Guerriere. Ahmad Zafar. Richard Jebby. Mike Brown. And Andy DeBoard. Thank you so much for supporting us. Um, we we just, could we, not do this show without you. No. Um, Brent so, and Bobby need to get fed. They need to eat. I disagree. I, I think it's overrated. Please, if you think that Brent and Bobby should eat, these, these are the guys that edit the videos. Let me just tell you, if they weren't editing the videos, the videos would look something like this. Hi, here's the news. Hello. Hi, whoa. Welcome to Tesla Time News. So if you don't want your videos looking like that, please consider supporting us on right. Patreon. All right, so viewer comment of the week. Now, my app last week, I think, beat your app. Um, it, it, there was far more intelligent, Ugh. scientific. Yeah, they're a bunch of squares. Well, okay, you said that you had some kind of... Complete um, losers. Okay, you right. said you have some kind of... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. This is a way cooler app, man. All right. Way cooler. Here we go. All right, we're at the beach this week, so let's see. All right, so oh. this week's comment comes from xcube 720 and he said, is the solo farm in the background? Wow. I mean, and that's a good question. That is a um, good question. So, X Cube 720, yeah, that was a, yeah, that was a solar farm. Yeah, there was we, no video editing there. Yeah, we drove. Um, we were just driving around. Next town over from us. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's has a, a beautiful a, solar farm. Yeah, and we were able to get it in frame, which is hard. Uh, yeah, this <laughs> week we were able to get um, some some beautiful um, wind, wind turbines, turbines in the background. Um, that we was had hard to too. move actually because the sun was so hot that it was uh, melting, melting camera. our camera. <laughs> um, but, you know, so maybe we should have, there should have been some solar panels around here. But anyway, the uh, solar farm, I mean, the, uh, the wind turbine in the background this episode was also real. Yeah. So thank you so much for, that was a great comment. So new superchargers that are going online this week. First, we have permitted ones in Sherburn, Minnesota, West Melbourne, Florida, Euroa, Kirkland Ave, Australia, Baker, California, Rig, Norway, and under construction this week in Albany Crossgates Mall, New York, Monterey, California, Laramie, Wyoming, Rollins, Wyoming, National Harbor, Maryland, Cookville, Tennessee, Trento, Italy, and Live Oak, Florida. Now, opening for the first time in the world. Oh my god, there's so many superchargers. I know, the 8 stall in Toulon, France. A 10 stall in Sailly, Fibre Court, France. An 8 stall in St. Polten, Austria. A 6 stall in Temescalingo, Mexico. A 6 stall in San Francisco, Ocolatan, Mexico. And an 8 stall in Rock Springs, Wyoming. So, there's a Double, we've just doubled the number of superchargers in Mexico. I know, um, from two to four. From two to four, so it's not, it's not crazy, but I mean, still a doubling, and just all over now the place. check out these cool supercharger reviews from our friends. Wow. This is Arlington, Washington supercharger, located off of exit 210. There is 16 superchargers about a mile away from the exit, located on the parking lot of Angel of the Winds Casino. There is also a small, all-you-can-eat buffet, only for $15.
and the hotel all in one place. There's also destination chargers, which are very close to the casino. Hello and welcome to the uh, Tesla Supercharger site here in Reading, Berkshire in England, about 30 miles to the west of London, uh, just off the M4. Um, four bays, doesn't seem to be an awful lot around, but if you walk past the green as the sign, just around the corner from the spiral staircase, that takes you into a courtyard. So here we are now, looking back at the uh, spiral staircase we just walked to, just 30 seconds or so, and the courtyard contains a, a little soft play area for children, um, which is chargeable, a fitness and wellbeing center if you need to work out while you're charging, a Zest cafe and bar, which uh, has outside seating and it's quite comfortable. Today we are visiting the Supercharger and Runners at the Memphis Mansion, which is an Elvis museum right next to it. So it's a nice stop if you want to have a break and some American food, you love it, then of course this is the place to go for you. This has 14 stalls, this Supercharger, which has recently been upgraded from 8 stalls, so that's awesome. Otherwise, it's not directly at the E45 motorway, so you have to drive a couple of minutes. Uh, but it's, it's all doable, it's all fine. We would rate it at 8 stars because of the many stalls that are available now, especially after the upgrade and also because of the restaurant and the museum close by. We're here at the Rolle Croix Supercharger, which is located next to the E45 in the southern part of Denmark. This has only six stalls, but there is a huge amount of restaurants and amenities here. So we have a gas station, Shell, that has a 7-Eleven. Also we have McDonald's and Burger King, very, very close by. We rated at a six stars uh, due to the low number of Supercharger stalls that are installed here but relatively high still due to the high amount of amenities. So we have a lot of restaurants and it's very close by to the motorway. Hi guys, this is Paolo reporting for Now You Know. Today I'm at the supercharging station in uh, Terminal 5 Heathrow, just outside the M25. This one is an eight bay station. It's located uh, in the Hilton Car Park Hotel. Th this is my little monkey and um, this one uh, doesn't get full stars or I, it's not one of my favorite ones because there's not much to do and um, it's just a hotel with a very expensive coffee. Hey Jesse and Zach, this is Jeff from Ohio. I'm at Dorothy Lane Market in Dayton. They put in a supercharger, two of them. And back here is Dorothy Lane. It's a high-end supermarket and we're in Oakwood and there's Arrow Wines just across a couple blocks and so you can get beverages and whatever you might need but pretty handy thanks bye hey guys so we're at the supercharger in St. Charles Missouri continuing our trip on towards uh, Yellowstone and eventually Glacier National Park this one's a five stall which is kind of an odd number literally and uh, it's a little bit hard to find kind of hidden behind the trees next to this uh, smash burger and we're traveling with our two pups and I wanted to show you how we've got this arranged we don't allow our dogs generally to travel out unconstrained and so what we do is we have crates set up for them that way if anything horrible happens they're at least safe and not gonna bounce around too bad so we have one of them facing sideways, and this is a five seat Model X. So we have the middle seats folded down, and uh, one of them in the middle facing sideways, and then the other one back here is in the way back facing backwards. Say hi to everybody. Yeah. And that leaves us quite a lot of room for our luggage and stuff. This is the four stall supercharger in Lermos, Austria on the property of the Moor Life Resort Hotel. These chargers are available to the public, but there are also two destination chargers in the underground parking garage for the Life Resort. There's a restaurant across the street in the hotel. There's also a bar right here. And if you walk 
five minutes down the road this way, there are other cafes and souvenir shops, and another five minutes from there are two supermarkets. Hey, it's Saturday morning, July 15th, 2017, and it's Tesla Supercharger Rewind, where we look at one of the very first supercharger locations ever, Barstow, California, halfway between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, baby, where maybe you were here before and there were only five or six. Not anymore. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen superchargers here. And that's the update. The latest was sixteen stalls still waiting in Barstow, California. Hi guys, this is Paul reporting for Now You Know. Today I'm at the Tankersley Supercharging Station. It's near Barnsley. It's got two bays and they've just recently installed a destination charger which is really handy because it can get quite busy and um, while someone's waiting they can always plug in and get a few miles on it it's got Wi-Fi toilet uh, it's got coffee you can have a breakfast a lovely breakfast over here there's a McDonald's two uh, minutes uh, drive away from here this only gets five out of ten because it's uh, a two bay supercharging station and it is about three or four minutes away from the M1. Wow, we are getting... That's a lot of supercharged reviews. We might have to put them somewhere else. Yeah, I think we're going to try and put these on our website and also on our Facebook so that you guys can go check them out. So we may not be up there by the time you see this, but we're working on it. Yes. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Um, please share this video with your friends. Yes. Whether they're your Tesla friends, whether it's your grandmother, yep. um, you know, the more people who see it, the more people might like it. Yep. I mean, it might not be for everybody. Definitely don't, you know, maybe your... Uh, your ice friends, maybe. Well, yeah. you know what? Even they need to see it. Even they need to see it. Because they're I mean, wrong. They're wrong. You know? So this is definitely a good way to prove them wrong. Right. About... Make them, them wrong a bet about everything. first. Yeah. Yeah. And then share it with them. Yeah. And then we'll split the money. <laughs> now you know. Now you know.